Okay, do you know any of these? Do you know like you any of these properties up here? the associative property of addition. Very, very good. Remember, associative regroups. Super. Anybody know another one? Um, Rob, Emma? Eight is additive identity. Eight is additive identity. Perfect. When we add zero, we get the same thing back again. Beautiful. Pan up to additive inverse. Additive inverse. When we add the opposite, we get zero. Perfect. Um, Grace? Three is commutative. Three is commutative. You are exactly right. Remember, there's no N in that word. So that's commutative of addition. Four plus five plus six, five plus four plus six. Same things are grouped. They're just in a different order. Very good. That's kind of a trick problem. Super. Uh, Rachel? Uh, four is identity. Beautiful. When you times by one, you get the identical thing back again. That's awesome. Dan? Uh, is multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. Another word for the multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get one. We are smoking today. Very, very good. Trevor? Six is commutative. This is commutative of multiplication. Again, you have the same two things in the parentheses, but their order is changed, so that is definitely commutative. Very nicely done. Jasmine? This is the distributive property. Everybody recognize that? Okay. What else we got, Alexis? Uh, 11 is multiplicative inverse. This is another inverse problem. Very good. Multiplicative inverse. Multiply by the reciprocal, you get one. Dan? Number nine is associative multiplication. This is associative of multiplication. You are exactly right. We everything stayed in the same order. We just regrouped. That's associative. Very good. Rachel? Uh, 10 is additive inverse. Additive inverse. When you add the opposites, you get zero. Very, very good. Some of these are repeats. That's okay. More practice. Lily? Uh, 12 is distributive. This is distributive. Good. It's distributive in the other order. We factored. Factoring is distributive. Very, very good. Um, Riley? 13 is um, associative addition. This is associative of addition because MNP, MNP, the order didn't change, just the grouping changed. Good, good, good. Two more, Dan. Uh, 14 is multiplicative identity. Very, very good. Multiplicative identity. When you times by one, you get the same thing back again. And what's the last one, Trevor? It's distributive. It's distributive. This is like a negative one. We multiply through by negative one. Very good. Anybody have a question about that? Okay, before we get started on our new stuff, <coughs> are there any questions about our old stuff? Anything from last night? Bailey? Let's take a look at number 63, working a little bit with scientific notation. You have all taken chemistry, so you've done some work with scientific notation. Okay, Bailey, do you have any idea how to get started? because there's a lot of zeros in these numbers. And if I write all that out, it's going to be really easy for me to screw something up in terms of missing a zero or adding too many zeros or something. So for me, it's easier to leave it in scientific notation. Keeping in mind 
that each number is the combination of a regular number and a power of 10. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to take care of these guys. I'm going to think of them as like terms. I'm going to take care of all the, the plain numbers. So these two get times, and that one gets divided. divided. So I'm going to take out my handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to do 1.35 times 2.41 divided by 1.25. And I get 2.6028 if I type it in right. Now I'm going to deal with the tens. All right, how many tens do I have on the top? Eight. Eight. All together, there's just one, because I've got negative seven and eight. So I have 10 to the first on top, and I have 10 to the ninth on the bottom. Right? Now, in scientific notation, I'm allowed to have negative exponents. So what does 10 to the first over 10 to the ninth, what's that going to equate to? 10 to the negative 8. And there's your answer. So that was a lot easier, I think, than writing it all out in standard form. On 29, how do you know whether a notation is bounded or unbounded? 29. Oh, we didn't talk about that vocabulary. Uh, take a wild guess. What do you think bounded means? Uh, like. Not well, not infinity wouldn't be bounded. That's right. Bounded means both endpoints are included. So it's bounded. That's bounded. <coughs> if you are not, you, you can be. This is kind of out of the scope of what we're doing here, but you can be bounded below. This would be called bounded below. This you might imagine is called bounded above, but to be bounded, you have to be bounded on both ends. You have to have definite, inclusive boundaries on both ends. So that's what it means. So if you've got a closed interval, you are bounded. If you don't have a closed interval, you're not. All right, who else? Dan? Can you just say the answer to 52? No, but I can do it. Start this lots of different ways. How did you start it, Dan? I think I reduced like from cancel. You reduced like one. I mean the four and the two. Oh, okay, okay. So, like so you just start canceling everything. Yeah. Okay. We could also. That's one strategy. You could also combine the whole numerator, mm -hmm. combine the whole denominator, and then, and then cancel. But it doesn't matter which way you do it. So. You said this was going to cancel into this and leave you with a 2. Actually, it's going to leave you with a 6, right? Because you got this 3 here. All right, so that's taken care of. All right, um, that's going to cancel in there and make a 1. But that's going to cancel down here and make a 1. So I have an A in the bottom. Yeah. That's going to cancel here and make a 2. But that's going to cancel totally with that and leave me with b to the fourth. Yeah. That's right. your answer. Okay, that's what people are going to Thank you. Okay, today we are going to talk about some more kind of little review stuff. We'll start with some vocabulary. Um, all the graphing we've done so far has been on the number line. Today we're going to move into two dimensions. Anybody know what this is called? It's, called, it's, called, it's a plane for sure. Do you know, a coordinate plane. Do you know who it's named for? It's actually got a name. It's named for Rene Descartes. It's called the Cartesian coordinate plane. Have you heard of Rene Descartes? Great, very, very famous um, mathematician and philosopher. Actually, Descartes was one of the 
only kind of normal mathematicians. Most of the mathematicians were crazy people, um, but he was he was pretty powerful and uh, well known. Okay, Cartesian coordinate plane. These are called. Anybody know what these four sections are called? Quadrants. These are called the quadrants. Do you know how the quadrants are numbered? One, two, three, and four. Generally speaking, we like to use Roman numerals to name our quadrant. This is called the what? X-axis. And this then, of course, is the... And this is called the... origin. And if I plotted a point here, like that guy right there, that would be called an ordered pair. Good? All right. Let's talk about now some things we're going to be doing with those ordered pairs. What if I said to you, I've got some point, I'll call it A, and some other point, I'll call it B. And I want you to find this, which is the distance from A to B. A, B, with nothing written out, no, no line over it or nothing, just, just plain A, B, that means distance. Does anybody remember how to find the distance from one ordered pair to another ordered pair? Distance formula. Okay, how's that work? Square root of x. This is a big square root, everybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Right now what do I do? x2 minus x1. So I subtract my x's. No, just, uh, now, she said x2 minus x1. Actually, it doesn't matter which way you subtract them. That's perfectly okay, but it doesn't matter. You just need to subtract your x's and square that. And because you're squaring it, that's why it doesn't matter what order you subtract them. Okay, then what? Plus. Plus. Y2 minus Y1. Same thing with the y's. And again, the order doesn't matter, but if you're most comfortable doing 2 minus 1, that's absolutely fine. So, what do we end up with here? That would be a 7 minus 3 is squared. 6, six minus 2 is squared. So, we end up with the square root of 32, which, because we are good, conscientious mathematicians, we're going to reduce that. Square root of 32 reduces to 4 root 2. 16, or 32 is 16 times 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. So 4 root 2 is the answer. Beautifully done. What if I took the same two points and said, what is their midpoint? Anybody remember how to do midpoint? Hannah? No, actually the order doesn't matter because you are not subtracting, you are oh, X plus X adding. Plus remember the yeah. midpoint is the average. If you can remember that, you'll never miss it because you all know how to average two things, right? How do we add, if I give you two numbers and say find the average, what do you do? Yeah. Add them and divide by mm -hmm. two. The midpoint is the average X and the average Y. So I'm going to take my two points and I'm going to average the x's. So 3 plus 7 is 10. divided by 2, 5. And 2 plus 6 is 8, eight divided by 2 is 4. So there's your midpoint. Midpoint is average. Add the x's and divide by 2. We add the y's and divide by 2. Over somewhere in the margin, right, midpoint equals average. That's going to be huge when we start graphing our trigonometric functions. So it's best probably to get that ingrained in our head right now. Midpoint is average. All right. Okay. Hey, 
go with that guy. This is another sort of midpoint problem, but it's a li little bit different. I want you to find D so that this is the midpoint of the segment. So here's the segment. Here's C, here's D, here's M. We know that C is 3, 7, and we know that M is negative 1, 5. Your job is to find D. All right, what do you think? I would um, find the difference between 3 and negative 1, and then you add whatever that is. Oh. Oh, using kind of a vector strategy, even though you may not associate that word to it. She says, look, this is the easiest way to do the problem. She says, look, for, if I started at C, but to get from here to here, look at just the x's for a moment, to get from here to here, essentially, I'd have to back up four. Would you agree with that? I know my picture doesn't look that way, but you'd have to back up four. So that means, doesn't it, that to get from here to here, I have to do exactly the same thing? So if I back up four more, where would I be? Negative five. Negative five. Now for the y's, I'm going from seven to five, which is backing up two. 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 So if I back up two more, I would be at three. three. Beautiful. Now, not everybody's going to want to do the problem that way. It's a little bit scary. Didn't really write very much down. Some of you like to write stuff down. So, again, knowing that this is what we were looking for, could you have said 3 plus x over 2 has to equal negative 1? So if you're kind of a formula-driven, I want to write stuff down and do all the steps person, does this make sense to you? Average your endpoints equals your midpoint. Now look, when you solve this, what happens? Don't you get the same thing she got? Yeah. You just have some work to show if you want to do it that way. I like your way. All right. Let's expand your brain a little bit here. Write the equation of the circle, oh Lord, remember those from last year. Write the equation of the circle whose diameter has endpoints at negative 1, 5, and um, 7. Now maybe before we do this, maybe we better take just a quick minute and refresh our memories on what a circle, a, the equation of a circle even looks like. Anybody remember what the equation of a circle looks like, Vincent? A square plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, let's use x, yeah, x squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 9 would be the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3. So this guy would have a center at the origin and a radius of 3. Anybody remember what they look like when they're not centered at the origin? These are awesome. We love them centered at the origin, but they aren't usually there. X plus H squared plus Y plus Q squared equals radius squared. Technically, it's a minus, but it's something like that. Yeah, it's X minus 4 squared plus Y plus 5 squared equals 16. Does that look familiar? Mm -hmm. Where's the center of this guy? Negative four, five. Positive 4, negative 5. <coughs> this is the translation. This tells me I've gone 4 units to the right. I've gone 5 units down. And what's my radius? 4. four. I 
So they put one more up here, make sure everybody's got it. Where's my center? If this is my circle, where's my center? Negative one, two. And what's my radius? Square root of 17. Perfect. Now, I want you to get from this information to this. This is what I want you to end up with, something that looks like this. So we're going to have x minus something squared, y minus something squared equals something. You need to fill in these blanks. Now, you talked about it. You did it last year. What's going to go in these blanks? The center. What's going to go over here? The radius squared. So somehow out of this information, you got to get the center and the radius. So let's look at the scenario. We have a diameter. Everybody remember what a diameter is? Distance across a circle. Um, doesn't the diameter go through the center? Okay. So here's the situation. Can you get what you need from that? Yeah. What are we going to do? Ms. Hartman? Um, negative 1 plus 7 divided by 2. What are you doing? What are you doing? Doing You're doing the midpoint because that's going to give you your center. Right. So negative 1 plus 7. Remember, midpoint is average. So negative 1 plus 7 is... 6 divided by 2 is 3. 5 plus 11 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I have x minus 3, y minus 8. Everybody okay with that? So far, so good. I only need one more number. Remember, this is the radius squared, just like uh, somebody said at the beginning, that's the radius squared. So I need to find my radius. Any thoughts on that, Blake? And the good news is, I can do the distance formula from here to here, from here to here, or from here to here, as long as if I do this, I remember to divide it in half, right? So what do you want to do? Which points do you want to use? You already had this done? Yeah. Oh, quite the guy. So the radius is going to equal 3 minus negative 1 squared and 8 minus 5. Is this my number? I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Because that hardly ever happens. I might have just made that up. Look at that. This is going to come out so nice. So what do we have? We have the square root of 16 plus 9. So my radius is 5. So what do I put in the blank? 25. Very, very good. GTQ, guaranteed test question. So let's practice one on our own. Write the equation of the circle. Work on this with your partner um, whose diameter has endpoints negative 3, 6, and 1, 8. This one's not going to come out so nice, but that's okay.
the center at negative one seven. Does that look okay to everybody? this way because you will be doing things this way at some point in your future. Okay? Now, we're going to look at the infamous absolute value problems. And I know that in the past, you have split that up into two different problems and gone from there. And that's still okay. I will never do a problem that way. You will not see me doing them that way because I'm your pre-calculus teacher. And we're going to do this from a calculus standpoint. But if you, after I get done blabbing away for a while, and you say, Ms. Ford, I had no idea what you just said, you need to be able to solve that problem. So you can fall back on your old methods. That's perfectly OK. But I'm not going to ever do them that way. You'll have to you know, remember. All right, so how am I going to do this problem? It's so simple. Let's back up for a second. Let's look on our number line. Let's say this is five and this is seven. If I said to you, what is the distance between five and seven? This is not a hard question. The distance between five and seven, you would all say the distance is two. And how did you get two? You subtract it, right? Now, if you subtract seven minus five, you get two. If you subtract five minus seven, you have to take the absolute value because distance is positive. It doesn't matter, as long as you're taking absolute value, it doesn't matter if you take seven minus five or five minus seven. Would you agree with that? So what do these represent? These represent the distance between five and seven. Easy. So when I see this, just that for a moment, what does that represent? The distance between x and four. So here's my number line and here's four. Now I don't know what x is. So could x be over here? Could x be over here? All I know is the distance, wherever x is, whether it's over here or over here, the distance between it and 4 is what? Less than 3. Well, wait a minute. If that distance has to be less than 3, then the furthest out that number could be this way is 7, and the furthest back it could be is 1. There's the answer to the question. All the numbers between 1 and 7. I didn't write two inequalities. I didn't worry about switching signs and putting negatives and all that crap. I just kind of thought in my head, OK, wait, I need the distance to be less than 3. All right, let's try another one. Both 
focus on this. What is this talking about? What is that expression in the circle there? What's that talking about? The distance between some number and three. Right? Some number and three. I don't know if that number is over here, over here, but the distance between that number and three has to be more than four this time. Okay? So what's exactly four away from three? Seven. 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 What's exactly four away from make or from three in this direction? Zero. Negative one. Negative one. Now, before I shaded in between. Now why did I shade in between over here? Because the distance had to be less than three. Now I want the distance to be more than four. So if this is where it's exactly four, where's it gonna be more than four? Out here. Where's it gonna be more than four here? Out here. So your answer is everything less than negative one or greater than seven. Here, I never wrote the answer here. The answer was everything between one and seven. Here's my number one. Now, what does this say right here? The distance between, between some number and six. So here's six. Here's the sum number. I don't know which side it's on. Could be on either side. All I know is that number has to be less than five away. That distance has to be less than five. So what would be exactly five this way? 11. 11. Exactly five this way? One. one. Now, do I want the numbers beyond 1 and 11, or do I want the numbers in between 1 and 11? In between. in between, because the distance is less than 5. So our answer is the nice little interval, closed interval, from 1 to 11. I've used interval notation here. All right. Kind of get the hang of that a little bit. Let me throw a curve in. Other than the two-digit number, what's the curve ball? It's a plus. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Distance. Distance has to be a difference. When you find distance, you subtract. You don't add. Does anybody have an idea how we might deal with this? Oh, you want to raise your hand, Lexi. Exactly. This is the same as x minus negative 4, isn't it? So this is the distance between some number and negative 4. And we want that distance to be 16. So where am I going to be out here? I'm 16 units away, so I'm going to be at 12. And I'm 16 units away this way, so I'm going to be at negative 20. Now pay attention. Do you want your distance to be less than 16 or more than 16? More. more. So we're going to shade out here. So we're less than or equal to negative 20 or greater than or equal to 12. Okay, throw one more curve in here. This one. Got a two in there. Bad news. Any ideas? Bailey? You would divide by two. 
Divide the whole shebang by two. Everything's divided by two. Now at this point, kids always say, Miss Ford, is that allowed? Mrs. Ford doesn't do stuff that's not allowed. Yes, it's allowed. Divide everything by two. And now we're right back. I know there's a fraction, do not panic. We're right back to where we were before. What does this say right here under my hand? What does this say? It's the distance between something and three. So there's three. Where's the something going to be? On either side, and it's going to be how far out? Two and a half. So if I go two and a half out this way, I'd be at five and a half. If I go two and a half back this way, I would be at a half. Notice, I'm just kind of putting on that my circles, everybody get why these are open circles? And I've used closed in some of my problems. Okay, now I gotta figure out, do I want between those two numbers or outside of those two numbers? This time I went outside again. So we're less than 0.5 or greater than 5.5. Bailey? You have to pay attention to this sign. Remember, this says the distance between these two numbers is more than two and a half. Here's where the distance is exactly two and a half. If you want to be more than two and a half, you've got to push out. Less than two and a half would be in between. All right, we're about out of time and I didn't get to everything I needed to. I want you to look quickly, if you have a book, if you look on page 22 at number 37, it says proof of the figure determined by the points is an isosceles triangle. So they give you three points, and they say prove if you connected those dots, you'd get an isosceles triangle. How are you going to do that? Teresa? Um, You're going to use the distance formula, and you're going to do it three times. So you're going to take these two points, and these two points, and these two points, and what's going to happen if you have an isosceles triangle? Two of them will match, right? So hopefully that's that's what will happen. All right, well, you're going to be on your own, some of those. Uh, your homework tonight's in Q2, so if you need to take a picture, take a picture of somebody, because there's a couple of take a picture of mine, you will need all three pages, 20, 21, and 22. Did you reach up behind you and press that button on? Leave that.